Okay. Hello, everybody. I just want to welcome you guys to the wellness fair that the Health and Wellness Center is having right now. So I'm a part of the ambassadors team. And so today I came up with a Kahoot with me and my peers. So this Kahoot is about ways to break stigma and different services that we have at the Health and Wellness Center to provide for you guys. So if you guys would like to join the Kahoot game, I put the game pin on so you guys can join. I think you're waiting for two more people to join the game. <laughs> okay, so let's start the game now. Okay, you guys are correct. It is true. So living with discrimination can have a negative impact on your mental health because this can actually cause your mental health or make mental health worse. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay, Naziha is the top one. Okay. Okay, so next next is unfairly people with mental health health conditions are often stigmatized when they're when they depict it on social media as you guys are so smart okay yeah so on social media people with uh, mental health um, conditions are usually depicted as dangerous and unpredictable this is obviously really not fair so for it shows on like social media a stigma stigmatized version of mental health and that it's bad and it's, and it's seen as someone who's weak and dangerous which is really not the case Okay, so why do many people refuse to seek professional help if they suspect that they are suffering from mental illness? Yeah, so it's really like all three. So it's stigma, discrimination, and fear of what others may think. So good job, guys. Good job. A lot of factors contribute into why people don't seek help if they feel like they have a mental illness. 
So Naziha is still number one. Okay. Okay, true or false, the language one uses is an important factor in reducing stigma. Yeah, this is true. So the language you use when referring to someone's mental health can really can help reduce stigma because the language you use can either make someone feel worse or feel like they want to hide what they have. But the, if you talk to them a certain way in a better way, they won't feel as stigmatized in society or discriminated against. So it's really the way you talk to someone, which can really help them feel more comfortable with what they have. Okay, so what type of language can be used to help break down negative stereotypes associated with mental health? Yeah, it's both A and B. So um, person first language and non stigmatizing language is the type of language that can help break down stigma and also um, reduce the stereotypes associated with the mental health. So good job, guys. You guys are so smart. Okay, so Ziha is still the top right now. Okay, so what percentage of individuals will directly be affected by mental illness in their family, friends, and colleagues? What do you guys think? Yeah, 80%. Yeah, so that's actually a lot. So like that shows that like the mental health, mental health is a very prevalent in our society today. Like it affects the majority of the people. Like even though you may not have it, there's someone around you who may experience it, which then also affects your life as well. So it's not just something that happens to um, a small percentage of people, it really happens to the majority. Okay, next, true or false, mental illness only affects adolescents, so like teenagers. Yeah, false, yeah. That was really quick, yeah, false. So like mental health doesn't discriminate. It can really affect anybody from any race, age, height. It doesn't really discriminate at all. So it only doesn't affect adolescents. It affects everybody, it affects children, it affects um, older people as well, people in the middle ages. It affects everybody. Okay, so what factors can cause mental illness? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all of the above. It's not just one thing. So your environment, your personality, and your uh, biological makeup. So you don't beat yourself up about it because for, so for a biological makeup, you may have a gene that's contributed to a certain mental illness. Your environment also contributes to um, your mental if you have a mental condition because the way you were raised or the way people treat you and also uh, your personality and how you're able to take things and your self-esteem. So all these things combined together that really contribute to if you um, have a mental illness or not. Okay, so true or false, approximately 20% of individuals will directly experience a mental health uh, issue during their lifetime. Yeah, this is true. So, so yeah, so 20% of individuals will directly experience a mental health issue during their life. So I know it's not a big number, but like, see how the 80% of your friends, family, your colleagues, my experiences. So it's still in people's lives today. So yeah, 20% of individuals will directly experience a mental health illness during their lifetime. I know I thought it would be a big number as well, but. Okay. True or false, the mortality rate due to suicide among women is four times greater than compared to men. Yeah, it's false. I know you guys all thought it was true. No, but it's false. Um, men, um, their suicide rate is actually four more times greater than women. 
Um, this is also another type of um, stigma and stereotype that women experience more mental health issues than men. However, when it comes to the suicide, it's more men, I guess, because they're more afraid to speak out about what they're going through. But yes, so men have um, their suicide mortality rate is four more times greater than women. Okay, so um, the highest rate of hospitalized uh, people for anxiety, uh, for anxiety disorders in the general hospital are among the ages. Yeah, I know, it's 65 years and older. So this shows how mental illness does not discriminate against age. So people who are older do experience mental illness not just people that are younger. So this shows that like everyone is experiencing some type of mental illness in their life and it doesn't discriminate. It's not just in the youths, but it's also who people are older. So you, you should be mindful, you should be mindful of this. Okay, true or false, if a student opted out of the SCSU health and dental plan, she cannot, um use the services at the health wellness center so now we're going to be talking about the services that we provide at health wellness center and yes this is false just because if you opt out of the SCSU dental and health plan it doesn't mean you cannot access the services at the health wellness center because those are two completely different things so yes you guys are right this is false Next, um, what do you need to be able to access the services at the Health and Wellness Center? Yep, all you need is your T card and your health card. So you, you don't just need your health card, you actually need your T card as well. So um, that they know that you are a student from uh, UTSC. So you need your T card and your health card or your UHIP card. What counseling services does the Health and Wellness Center provide? Yay, good job guys. Yeah, so they have one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions. They also have group therapy sessions. So they have drop-in sessions, so drop-in drop -in groups, and they also have registered groups. And they also have my SSP, which is an online counseling service. So yes, they provide all these three services for counseling services. So you have a variety of things to choose from what makes you feel the most comfortable. Okay, so the Health and Wellness Center only provides health promotion and, educa and health educational services. Yeah, this is false. We provide much more. We provide doctors, nurses, and counseling. So we don't only do health promotion and health education. We also have the services that you guys can access on campus as well. Okay, now Lydia's in the lead. Okay. Okay, so true or false? There are embedded counselors in each department at UTSD. Yeah, this is true. So um, each department has its own embedded counseling uh, counselor. So this is also really good because you may have a concern about your education for a specific program. So you can go to your embedded counselor who understands what you're going through about the course and you can talk to them. So yes, UTSC does have embedded counselors for each department. My SSP app, so my student support program is, what does, what does it provide? Yeah, all the above. So I know it's really cool. So it's available 24-7 for all UTSC students. So you can access it anytime and anywhere. 
uh, you are able to chat with the counselor, like, like I said, anytime and anywhere you want. And it's available in 146 languages. And also it is free for all UTSC students, which is really cool. It really lets everyone have the ability to access it as well. Okay, Lydia is still in the lead. This is the last question, guys. Okay, so true or false, all services offered at the Health and Wellness Center are confidential. Yes, this is true. So all the counseling services, the doctor's appointments, you seeing the nurses, or anything you come and buy from the Health and Wellness Center will all be confidential. So you do not have to worry about your parents hearing about anything that goes on or your professors as well. Okay, so third place is EJWJ, second place is Sahar, and first place is Lydia. <laughs> Good job, guys. So I just want to thank all of you guys for coming to the Health and Wellness Fair today. I know this is a really tough time and it's a really busy time as well. So I hope you guys enjoy and you guys learn something about a mental illness and a mental illness st uh, stigma as well. And I also hope that now that you guys know some of the services we provide at the Health and Wellness Center, you won't hesitate to come and drop by. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and thank you for joining.